Today's show is pre recorded. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all don't know y'all better act. Hat on, hat on, suit on, suit on, looking like the Capitan, giving them all. Dress like a million bucks, but things in his cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be but Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. Right. They're listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. Listening to the voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. Man, oh man, oh man. Whew. Hey, um, you know, today I, j- I just want to say something um, um, that I don't think I've ever shared this way before. Um, the 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 the, the title is very simple. And that is, it's been worth it to me. You know, I, I I just, I just kept thinking that this morning, that it's all been worth it to me. And what I mean by that is this relationship that I have with my heavenly father, it's been worth it to me. I, I, I can't even tell you the value that it has had in my life. I, I I can't tell you how it's helped me to understand not only my purpose, but to better understand my past. That's 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 critical, man. Because I, I'm I'm grateful for that because so many people can't get beyond their past an event, a set of circumstances, some calamity that besets them. Maybe it's been grief, something. But it ties so many people up. It's been so worth it to me. It it, it man, it it's it's been worth having someone to go to when no one else was there. Do you do you understand what I'm saying? It has it has given me a place to go when no one else has been there. Oh, hey man, we pulling for you. Hey man, hang in there. Hey man, keep your head up. All of that. But I gotta tell you, man, you get yourself in some circumstances and situations in this thing called life when no one can help you but God. When the only person that could possibly understand or know what you're feeling is God. The only person that'll sit there with you through it all and understand everything about it has been God. It's been worth it to me, man. It's It's been worth it to me. It's been the biggest improvement in my life. 
I mean, man, as, as I look back over my life, man, forming a strong bond with God has been the most beneficial thing to me. You know, these things you read in your in in your in 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 writings in, in the Bible or, or or whatever you're reading, you know, when you when you read scriptures and things of that nature, it, it it's it's been around a long time. It holds so much truth to it. I mean, man, it's like how could this have been written so long ago? and still pertain directly to today. I mean, that that's amazing. That is amazing to me. That, I mean, that has to be God at work, to have written something so complete, so dead on point, that if you read it today, it means exactly what pertains to today. That's amazing, man. That that's why my 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 spiritual walk, it's just worth it to me. And I keep saying it's worth it because if you sitting out there and you tripping like I was tripping, deciding, nah, let me do it. I got a few more things I want to do, a couple more girls I want to holler at, a couple more things I want to get into. I got a couple more deals I want to do. I got a little bit more dirt I want to roll up on me a little bit first for I man, I wish I had known. I really wish I had understood exactly what forming a relationship with God would do for me. It's been worth every person who out there who hate know me that don't even know me. It's because I have a relationship with him that I'm fine with that. I don't care for it, but it ain't going to stop me, though. See, because I know for a fact that haters make you greater. I know for a fact that haters validate your your mere existence. I know for a fact that half of them is out of envy and jealousy because of something you're doing that they wish they could do or they want credit for. So they just, ah, anything, all that, bam. And now you just all over the place with people. Man, I'm so grateful for this relationship that it has not allowed outside influences that do not have my best interests at heart to, to throw me off course. It, it, it has just been worth it. And if you're sitting out there and you're wondering about the benefits of it, I, I can't even tell you what it's like to know that when bad things are happening to me, the calming peace that I feel that I know that that's going to be all right, too that I know that this too shall pass, that I know in my heart of hearts, man, that there's got to be a reason for this. And if I can just hang on in there, he going to unfold that for me and he going to let me see it. But the number one thing I always know is I'm going to survive this one too, that this too shall pass. It has been worth it to me, man, to, to, to have this thing called faith, which is the belief in things that you cannot see. And to know, man, along the way that, oh, my goodness, man, even though I don't know what's next or even I'm not really sure about the next step, I do know for a fact that some more is coming. I do know for a fact it is a fact that God will take care of me. It is a fact that he will never, ever leave me or desert me if I just stay here where I'm supposed to be. He's coming. The Calvary's coming over the hill. He coming over the hill, and when he come over that hill, he gonna wipe out all this mess down here that's that's trying to hurt me. That that I don't have to worry about my enemies anymore. That my enemies that are all around you can surround me. You can shoot all the arrows you want. Now it's not to say that none of them ain't gonna come close, and I ain't gonna say that you know. I ain't going to be a little under some pressure, a little nervous about being shot at so hard. But at the end of the day, I know this for sure. Ain't none of them going to stick in me. You can shoot them, but ain't none of them going to stick in me. No matter what you do, no weapon formed against me. Nothing. You can't You can't do nothing with me, man. I'm. I'm so cool. It's been worth it for me. Man.
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, all the people who are orchestra conductors, anyone who has ever aspired to or been an astronaut, anybody who works at Cape Canaveral, anybody that's ever been in the circus, welcome to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. We have a few people on this show that has been in the ladder in the circus before, but I rescued them at a young age, and so they're here today. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ever grateful to God for this new day, this new blessing, this new opportunity, this new chance, another shot. Man, oh man, oh man, what a great day it is. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm already glad and I'm in it. You too. Steve Harvey Morning Show, Shirley Strawberry, Carla Pharrell, Mississippi Monica Jr., and the legend that is nephew Tommy. Junior. Yes, sir. I can tell that mm. it was a rough weekend on you. I'll, no. you know, I can just look at you on the Zoom and I already know. I'll tell, right. tell you what happened. I'll what tell you what happened. All right, huh? I'll tell you. What family what vacation, you huh? Family it's vacation. Too much that happens, though. Too much. Yeah. Family <laughs> vacation, huh? Yeah, yeah. first one. We, we planning one. And I'm telling you right now, if I got to pay for it, everybody not going. Some of y'all going to see these pictures. Some of y'all just get a phone call. Everybody not going down here to Disney. I'm not doing that. They no, gonna see it on social, social media. They gonna see what? <laughs> how many it's, is it, Junior? If if five of us, no, everybody not going. Five. One of these grandkids five. ain't gonna. Junior, get it. Junior, no. five dog. Yeah, no, everybody. One of these babies not gonna see Mickey. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> oh, so you might well go ahead. Yeah, baby. Junior, five dog. Dog five. And I'm I'm paying? Ah, uh, hey, y'all didn't tell me this part was coming with it. You ain't mentioned it. Well, this. I got news for you, Junior. Guess what? Look like you ain't going. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, me? But all them kids is going, Junior. Uh, hey, 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 uh. Somebody not going to see Mickey. Now, it's, you know you're who not is. going, Junior. First of all, they're only going to pay for, for Junior. If it's only four, you can't leave none of the grandbabies out. That's what we do with well, I can't. Why? Because okay. me and Tommy do it all the time. The family go a lot of places we don't get to go because we got to go to work. That's yeah. your damn job. Okay. That's your well, job. So I'm paying for it and I can't go. Yeah. That's Boy. how it happens sometimes. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Y'all didn't oh, tell wow. me this part. Yeah. You ain't tell me this part. We know we had to. Yeah. But you see, had to. But see, Junior, Junior, the reason we so you so shocked by all this, because it all happened to you at one time. It did. <laughs> It did. See, you you didn't you didn't practice just being a husband, <laughs> then have kids, then have grandkids. You Don't was all that grandkids. after one day. After one day. <laughs> and so, that I do. No, I'm telling you, man. The hotel, the flights, and and the tickets to the park. What, what? Junior? Junior? The flights, how you think they're going to get there? The hotel, where you think they're going to stay? And the, and the ticket to the park, what is they down there to see if they don't get in the park? Uh, airport open all day, so we will stay there. Mm. All right. What? Mm. Wow. Uh, coming up at 32 I told y'all this was too much for him at one day. I told the you hour. said it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hear from the nephew as he runs that prank back right after this. Ooh, we may. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for the nephew and today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Neff? I need you to wash me. Uh-uh. Yes. 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 No. I need no. you to wash me. <laughs> Play the prank, man. It's a great day at nursery. This is Felicia. I, I'm trying to get somebody to come down here to 501. I'm sorry? 501. I need somebody to come down here to 501 and, and, and clean me up. Sir, I think you might have the wrong number. I need okay. the nurse to come down here to 501 and clean me up. Sir, this is the nursery, not the nurse. I think you might have dialed the wrong number. No, they, 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 I need to talk to, to uh, where is Nurse uh, Cynthia? That's who normally clean me up. I need to, to come down here and clean me up. Sir, I really do think you have the uh, the wrong number. Where, where are you calling from? Who, 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 who is this here? This is Felicia. I'm the director here at the nursery. That's what I say. I need the nurse to come down here and clean me up. 
Oh. Now, this bed, I, I'm, this bed pan and every, all this stuff to clean me up because oh. I've been sitting here a long time. Now, ain't nobody come. Well, sir, I think you dialed the wrong number. Uh, if you tell me where you are, I can try to help you, but you... I ain't dialed no wrong number. I need somebody to come down here and clean me up. This ain't right. But y'all supposed to be able to, y'all supposed to get here with, it, 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 every hour somebody supposed to come check on me. Ain't nobody come check on me yet. Okay, well, I, I apologize, but you have the wrong number. Um, try hanging up and then dialing. Is this a nurse you. station? Sir, this is a nursery. We take care of children here. This is not the nurse station. I'm not no child. I said, is this the nurse station? Sir, I, I'm, I'm sorry, you're not listening to me. This is not the nurse station. This is a nursery. We have children here. We take care of children. So I think you dialed the wrong number. No, it, they said that they're supposed to come clean up every hour. They're supposed to come check on me. Now, I've been here. I've been here mighty near three hours. Ain't nobody come to check on me yet. And now that I need somebody to come clean me up. And the, okay. the, uh, the, the okay. bed pan okay. is full. And, and they just they, 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 they just don't come check on us like they're supposed to check on us. They're supposed to I come am, check on us. I'm really sorry that they have not come to check on you in, in your, your bed pan. So why would they let us sit here like they do? Okay, sir, just listen to what I'm saying. This is a nursery. We take care of small children. This is not the nurse's station, so I'm no, sorry. No, my grandkids, I got small children as my grandkids. I got about 42 grandkids. For, 42, huh? They come see it on Sunday, but soon as they leave, the uh, people at the nurse station that they treat me bad and leave me here like this here two, three hours. Don't nobody come check on me. Can you come down here and check this bed, pain? Sir, I can't do that. I need to get back to the kids here that, I'm, that we take care of at the My nurse kids, nurse. no, my kids don't come till they come on Sunday. They come every Sunday after church and they come see me. Do they? Okay. Okay, well, I, I'm glad your kids come see you, and I'm going to um, get off the phone now. When I hang up, you just dial dial the number right you gonna, back. When you get off, you're going to come down here and come see and clean me up? I'm, I'm not going to do that, but I'm going to let you call back. And Why you all come clean me up? Why you all do that? Why you do it? Sir, I'm not a nurse. I'm a teacher, not when, a nurse. When, 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 when I will come and do, people pose to do their job. You do what the job is. Whatever your job is, that's what you do. I worked 42 years straight, and I did my job. Okay. I'm a teacher. That's Why what you won't come on down here and do what you're supposed to do? Because I don't clean bed pants. You know why, because y'all young folks don't do your job. The damage you're going to make me mad if you don't get your <laughs> down here. You get your <laughs> down here. Uh, I'm going to ask that you not talk to me like that. If you get your down here and come clean this bed pan and clean me up. I ain't supposed to be sitting here like this all the time. What's your name again? It's Felicia, and I have Felicia, tried to be Felicia, really, really, really nice to you. Down here right now. Please do not speak to me like that. I'm trying to let you know that you guys... You anyway, I want to. You're going to calm down and quit talking to me like that. I'm trying to help you. Now, that's just rude, speaking to me like that. Now, this is a nursery. And you're supposed to do what a nurse is supposed to do. You get your <laughs> down here right now. now you you, you know, a nurse, nice Felicia, you as I possibly get... can. But, David, you're not going to talk to me like that. That's just rude and disrespectful. Don't speak to me like that. You, then you, you talk about kicking the I will kick your in the wheelchair. This seems to be the only language you understand is me talking to you crazy since you talking to me crazy. Well, when is you going to get your down here? My is not coming down there. You stay in that stink. How about that? What, what What? did you say? You heard me. I said you stay in that stink. I'm not cleaning no ass. I've been trying to tell you for the past five minutes, but you won't shut up long enough to listen. Well, how long is it before you go get here then? I am not coming down there to clean your Why not? I've been trying to tell you that it's not my job. You dial the wrong number. Who you think you talking to? I'm talking to you. Who are you talking to like that? You're going to make me whoop your Well, bring it on in. If you think you can get in your wheelchair and make it down here to the nursery to whoop my ass and come the hell on. Listen, will you take a message from me and give it to somebody? What, what's, your, what's your message? Write this down. N-E. N-E. P. N uh-huh. What else? H. Uh-huh. E. Uh-huh. W. What? Okay, you, that's the, you got that part. 
Yeah, I got that far. Okay. T O M M Y. What is that? What do it spell? I don't know. What is it? Well, spell it out. I'm not spelling that. You tell me what it is. What does it say? I don't know. Nephew taught me. <laughs> nephew Tommy, this is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show, baby. You just got pranked by your sister, Renita. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. Oh, my God. That, yeah, yeah. You, you got me. You got me. You got oh, me. Oh, baby. I got you. I got you. Good. I got one question for you, though. What is? What is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? It is the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> you got me good. <laughs> <sighs> All right, nephew. Uh, coming up next, it is Ask the CLO <laughs> with our chief love officer. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, O.J. Simpson will be cremated. And the executor of his estate uh, plans to fight payout to the Brown and Goldman families. Mm. <laughs> Megan, yeah, Megan the Stallion shares her secrets on staying fit. And the one and only Steve Harvey is trending for his celebrity what? family feud fly gear. That's right. We'll talk about all of these stories and certainly Steve at the top of the hour. But right now it is time to ask the CLO, our chief love officer, Steve Harvey. This is from Janice and Tyler. Janice writes, my husband was assaulted by a man while he was out last weekend and rumors have been swirling about him messing with this man's wife. The My husband said he was robbed, but he still has his wallet. He still has his watch and $1,200 shoes. So is he lying to me about this well, assault? <laughs> hard, hard to fake a robbery without nothing missing. The key yeah. to lying is you have to put something. He should have took that watch, hid it, <laughs> called the money out the wallet. He could have did anything. But see, that didn't yeah. work. Now, he got assaulted. That's for sure. You have to figure out, is it this man's wife that it was the assault was caused by? Mm -hmm. Or was it a random failed robbery attempt? And I can tell you right now, just by watching the news, mm -hmm. hardly ever do they have a failed robbery attempt. <laughs> 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 These young ass boys are going to get something. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. So he's lying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you know. All right, moving on to Shauna in you, St. See, Louis. See, one thing about me now, if you don't tell a good lie, I can't ride with you. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, this was not a good one. You have your restrictions, yeah. All right, Shauna in St. Louis says, I'm a school nurse. My friend's seven-year-old son fell on the playground, so I patched his knee up. He told me thanks and said he thinks I'm pretty, but his mom doesn't. <laughs> the boy has no reason to lie. So should I confront his mama or not? <laughs> no, you shouldn't. I think you're pretty. You pretty mama, to though. the boy. You're not pretty to his mama. Mm -hmm. Your job is the nurse. You ain't mm -hmm. you ain't got to be pretty to the mama. What? Now I can tell you this right here though. What? You way finer than his mama though. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> right now. And the boy knew it. The nurse you know, is finer than the mama. Hell yeah. Oh, okay. That's why the mama hating. She thinks she's yeah. cute. She ain't cute at all. Look at her. <laughs> Great, big old pretty eyes. <laughs> Long ass, real hair. Where her weave at? She got on my nerves. Look at all them teeth. Ain't had no dinner work. They just straight anyway. Drinking all that damn milk when she was a baby. Just get on my last damn. I can't stand people like that. Everybody else get BBL. She ain't gonna get one. She just gonna wear her natural ass. <laughs> I'm so sick of her. Okay, <laughs> moving on to Elsie in Queens. <laughs> I don't know how we got there. Elsie uh, in Queens says, uh, "My wife goes to bed when the sun goes down. I am up till the wee hours of the morning. She used to stay up and play, if you know what I mean. She caught me quote playing by myself yesterday morning, and uh, she got mad." Isn't it better than cheating? Yeah, Playing it is. By yourself? Huh. Yeah, it is, though. It's much better. Yes, absolutely. Matter of fact, that's you not... playing right next to him? Yeah. 
But you didn't was even he right have next to think to about him? that one, huh? Was he right next to her? Yeah. Well, she caught him. She caught him playing by himself yesterday morning. She caught him. She what is you doing, Clifford? What is you doing? Why <laughs> <laughs> is his name Clifford? <laughs> Let's yeah, no, it's dog. better he that than, you know, you know, at least he ain't out in the streets. You know what you want. I don't know what to tell you, lady. He ain't like the <laughs> other man in the first asked the CLO line about the rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can tell you right now. <laughs> I got assaulted. <laughs> but I'm not going to press charges because he, 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 right. like he needed some stuff. So I wanted to. Right. Him out. I don't know how he forgot to take this money. <laughs> right. yeah. He's lying. All right. Last one, Steve. Last one. This is from Valentino in uh, Southwest D.C. Valentina says, um, I was walking my dog and a man smiled at me and spoke. The lady he was with asked him why he spoke. It was so rude. He waited for me the next day and apologized, then asked me out. He said he's not married. Uh, is this situation too risky? Very risky. <laughs> Very risky. Very risky. Mm. She mad about the speaking. Yeah. He was with her. Mm -hmm. I mean, five. Where is she? <laughs> oh, girl, we passed. Just tried to stare me down. <laughs> Not Bill with him. Who is he? <laughs> and when I looked at you, you looked at the ground. Mm. Hmm. I don't know who she is, but I think that you do. Mm -hmm. That gummit, who <laughs> is she and what is a she to you? Now, after that song played back where if they was walking together, they was coming from somewhere walking or walking to somewhere. Mm -hmm. You need to find out who is she and what is she to you? Mm -hmm. Well, he said he's not married. <laughs> oh, that don't mean nothing. Mm -hmm. But if she thinks she is, <laughs> or if she want to be, uh -huh. mm -hmm. the problem. Yeah, she thinks he's her man, I guess. Mm -hmm. Is she mad he's speaking to women in front of her? <laughs> yeah. He's very stupid. They may <laughs> not be married. But it's something. But if he didn't dip the cookie in the milk, believe that. Yeah, and then he's over there asking her out. Well, yeah. they already been out. That's why you don't take walks with nobody. You don't. When the last time you walk with somebody you don't know? <laughs> no, he, he waited for the woman that was walking her dog and a, and the next day apologized. Yeah, tomorrow, yeah next day. Mm -hmm. She's going to be out here tomorrow with this dog. I see her. I'm sorry this happened, you know. Um, uh-huh. And uh, that, that was just so rude of her. L listen, can I make this up to you? Can I maybe buy you a cup of coffee? No. You know, it's too who risky. is she? Yeah. It's Why too is she risky. so upset that you spoke to me? Well, listen, listen. She was just so rude. Mm -hmm. And and that's why I'm apologizing because I was walking didn't. her uh -huh. home because she had just somebody was just flirting with her across the street, a group of young guys. And I said, wow, well, let me walk with her and mm -hmm. stop. Because I stopped them young dudes. I said, hey, 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 y'all going to be a little bit more respectful for, than that. And yeah. so I was walking with her. And then when I spoke to you, that's when she surprised me with this unforeseen fit of jealousy and rage. And after I walked her to where she was going, I came her. back here tomorrow to apologize to you because I don't, I don't know where that came from. Are and you I'm telling me the truth married. right now? Oh, no, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> oh, that was too much. Sometimes you can put too much on it, Steve. Oh, I'm All right. Him if you don't believe me, but we got to get a story together. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got to worry about her. Last time I'm walking her somewhere. All right. Can we go Coming up <laughs> at the top of the hour. Thank you, CLO. We'll have some entertainment news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. A lawyer who represented O.J. Simpson, who died from cancer last week at the age of 76, said Simpson's body will be cremated. 
The family will have a private celebration of life for friends and loved ones. O.J. Simpson had three kids by his first wife, Marguerite Whitley, and two children with his second wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, whom he divorced back in 1992. In 1995, Simpson was famously acquitted in the murder of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ronald Goldman. In 1997, in the civil case, O.J. was ordered to pay $25 million in punitive damages to the Goldman and Brown families. Since his death, O.J.'s executor and lawyer, Malcolm Laverne, said he wanted to clarify his comment in which he said he didn't want Goldman's family to be able to collect any money from Simpson's estate. Quote, in hindsight, he said, in response to that statement, that it's my hope to get zero nothing, I think that's pretty harsh. Uh, that's according to attorney Laverne. Uh, now that I understand my role as the executor and the personal representative, it's time to tone down the rhetoric and really get down to what my role is as a personal representative. So there you go. He kind of walked back on some of the harshness of those uh, statements that he made yeah. about the Goldman family not getting any money. Mm hmm. Hmm. Well, yeah. You know, it's really kind of hard to comment on that. I don't really know. I'm, you know, look, mm-hmm. you know, he was acquitted in the trial and then he was found guilty in the civil trial. Mm-hmm. Well, if you lose in the tri- civil trial, that's what you have to do. Yeah. You know, pay. yeah, you have yeah. to pay. I mean, yeah. I know. thought it was kind of harsh what his attorney said in the in the beginning that the Goldmans are getting nothing. But then, well, you he, know, you can't plus dog. Yeah. You can't say that. Yeah, that was I, you no, know was, there are rules and laws to this mm-hmm. thing, and I'm I'm pretty sure M- Mr. Simpson has no knowledge of this at this point right now. So I think you need to just do your damn job. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what and he's just saying. read it and then let the court process uh mm-hmm. take its thing. Yeah. yeah, and that's what he's saying. It's time to tone down the rhetoric and get down to what his role really is. That's according to the attorney. All right, we're going to move on. Uh, in other entertainment news, Megan Thee Stallion is on the cover of Women's Health magazine. Have you guys seen yeah. it? It she is beautiful. She was on beautiful. Celebrity Family Feud too, Lord. Uh, yeah, <laughs> she oh, looks really? gorgeous. In <laughs> Jesus' name. Megan shared that it is a struggle to get her to work out and to get her routine started and she must mentally prepare. Megan said in part, quote, if I want to be a stallion and not a pony, Mm. I got to get up and put in the work. I love that. If I want to be a stallion and not a pony, I got to get up and put in the work. Uh, Megan goes to Pilates, she goes to the gym or to the beach with her trainers four to five days a week. Um, She does 40 minutes of cardio on the elliptical. Uh, For her lower body, she does goblet squats, leg extensions, hip thrusts, and donkey kicks, which she calls stallion kicks. I love that. Megan's healthy meals typically include breakfast. Uh, She'll have protein powder smoothies for breakfast pan seared salmon for lunch and for dinner she'll have some fish like maybe sea bass or cod with sweet potatoes kale tomatoes or brown rice so let's there you stop go this. let's stop this listen to me what? listen to me. what to all the ladies out there you are beautiful as you are listen to me don't listen to all this donkey kicking and glute <laughs> squatting and, and track running and all this here and think you finna go out here and your ass finna be made to stallion you you yeah. not some of y'all is ponies you can be the best you that you can be, basically. That's right. Right. Mm-hmm. right. You can have a hot is, girl you know, summer. There's some cheetos out there. There's some lionesses out there. Just be the it best. It takes yeah. all types of mm-hmm. shapes and bodies to make the animal kingdom stand strong. Mm-hmm. So don't be sitting up here thinking you finna go out and buy a bunch of damn sea bass and your ass finna <laughs> look like Meg the Stallion because you're not. <laughs> Come on, man. Megan, Megan said uh, she's no more space. than I can start eating chocolate chip cookies and look like Idris Elba. Do you understand me? <laughs> yes, Lord. Uh, hey, wait, Megan on, said on, she's on, in the sure. space. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yes, Lord. You know what yes, you're not Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. Hold up. Sure. You said Idris, okay? Yeah, yeah, but you know, but you don't, we don't need to take all that, though. Yes, Lord. <laughs> You Megan know. said she's in a space where she feels good mentally. The so she story wants to, is over, Shirley. She we wants to look those. as good as she feels. All and right. what I said was the 
neat finale of what you said. <laughs> anyway, now it's up your our turn. listeners thinking they're going to go out here and buy some sea bass <laughs> and some damn go and do donkey kicks and call them stabs. What is a donkey kick? <laughs> I don't know what that is. You know when you're on all fours and you kick your leg out to the yeah, side? Yeah. You know, oh. you've seen women Surely. do that. Surely. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is, yeah. What's what's the problem? You or can you dish it, but you back. can't take it. <laughs> she said, Idris. Oh, no, oh, see, that's, why, that's why I did it. Though. See, see <laughs> huh? that shot she took in me. Now, all of a sudden, she what, what shot? <laughs> you said Idris Elba. Yeah, you said Idris. <laughs> all right, look. Shirley, how many donkey kicks do you do when you work? I don't do donkey kicks. Well, when do you work out? Every day. I walk. I just walk. I don't do donkey kicks. I just walk. I have a hot first, girl right? summer, friend. Uh-huh. I just walk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like donkey kicks. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. <laughs> well, I want to know now, though. <laughs> right. <laughs> I got here. All right. Stuff. Speaking of uh, looking good, Steve, you might want to hear this because uh, you're looking pretty fly on the gram. Uh, we see you rocking your fly leopard gear for a celebrity family feud press day. And uh, you must be feeling too, feeling good too, and looking great. Congratulations! Uh, uh, pimp, coming up in twenty minutes, af- huh? I like, go ahead, pimp, pimp gear is all I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> coming up in twenty minutes after the hour. Yesterday was tax day. Did you pay or file for an extension? We'll talk about it right after this. <sighs> yeah. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, yesterday was the deadline to file for your 2023 tax return or file an extension. Now, according to CNN, failing to file on time when you still owe taxes will subject you to a failure to file penalty, which is based on how late your return is and the amount of your unpaid tax. Specifically, it will be 5% of your unpaid taxes for each month or part of a month that your return is late. The IRS notes, however, this penalty will not exceed 25% of your unpaid taxes. Keep in mind, too, your outstanding balance will be the subject to interest, will be subject to interest. If you're a late filer who is owed a refund, in reality, you won't be hit with a failure to file penalty if you miss your deadline. Okay, so did you file on time? Did you have to file an extension, Steve? And even though this is... Okay, yeah, yeah, on yeah. time. This is oh, the yeah. day after the tax deadline. So, Steve, do you have any tax tips or t- tax horror stories you want to share? And I see you with your hand on your face, so something well, is I've going on. Well, I've been a tax horror story before. That, that'll never happen again. You've been a story. headline. I paid them damn taxes. I've been, I've been online for mine before. <laughs> and it was an oversight, but Lord have mercy, they ate my ass alive. So. No, I'm finished. Is paying for the year of for for 2023. Oh, God. Amen. Oh, really? Praise so you Lord. paid on time yesterday? You knocked yeah, it off? I can't do that penalty. I can't do that. Yeah, you, they're yeah. already whoo. yeah with interest and yeah, mm-hmm. it's never ending if you don't pay it. Yeah, a friend of mine told me how much he paid, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. it was an, a staggering figure. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Really? Staggering figure. But then I told him, I said, also the blessing is, it's two blessings. You had it to pay. That's, yeah, right. that's number one. Mm-hmm. And then you had to pay it. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Because for your tax bill to be that much, you made mm-hmm. some money. You bought. Yeah. <gasps> mm-hmm. So we had a good hard laugh about that. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Give us a number, a ballpark, man, so we can just give me a ballpark. Oh, a friend of mine? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unless you want to share. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I, I would never share mine. Because <laughs> <laughs> you've been a headline, it's been shared for you. <laughs> uh, uh, as a matter of fact, we're going to leave him out of this, too. Cause I- <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even give us a name. We don't know who it nah, is. No, hell no. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> Yeah, let's move on. Have a nice day. <laughs> you don't want to talk about that. Damn. That, was a lot. that just means I walked was in yesterday. Lot. My husband was finishing what up you, the taxes, okay. and he said, "Don't touch nothing. <laughs> don't touch a piece of paper. Don't move yeah. nothing." What do, so what do you all think is a high number? Uh, a million. Yeah, yeah, that's a big number for us. That's big. 
I'm saying 10K. Oh, you wish you could pay a million? What are you saying? We got to go. (laughs) Coming up in 34 minutes after the hour in trending political news, Trump stopped last week at a Chick-fil-A in Atlanta, was set up by a black conservative activist, and we'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Former President Donald Trump's interaction with a black woman conservative supporter at a Chick-fil-A in Atlanta last week has gone viral. The woman is a conservative activist and founder of Conserve the Culture, which recruits and educates college students and young alumni at Atlanta's historically black colleges and universities. She told the former president, quote, I don't care what the media tells you, Mr. Trump, we support you. Some of Trump's outreach to African-Americans has played on racial stereotypes, of course, promoting $399 branded sneakers or suggesting that black people would empathize with his dozens of felony charges. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Come on, really, come on. Trump is currently... (laughs) (laughs) You're buying black people some chicken now. That's what we're doing. (laughs) <laughs> that's sad, right, Tommy? Nice really little sad. three-piece. That's what mm. we're doing. <laughs> we're Chick Fil A nuggets. <laughs> but Trump I'm is hearing in that facing... story. But I'm uh-huh. hearing in that story. So this woman, who is a black conservative, who works at historical black colleges, educating black students on the conservative culture, mm-hmm. we're gonna keep that program, but we're gonna get rid of all the diversity and inclusion programs. Go mm-hmm. figure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good point, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're recruiting mm-hmm. you college that, students. Mm-hmm. You're recruiting college students that are conservatives, but various PWIs, like you said, Steve, they're mm-hmm. getting rid of diversity programs and all this. But I bet you they want those black athletes, though. I bet you that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. to go to and, l- and let me help you understand something else, in. too. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And I mean this in the way that I'm saying it. So hear all of it. You can think white all you want, but you are not going to be white. You will never be accepted as white. Mm. So you can you can get out of that line right now, y'all, because I'm telling y'all when it's time to draw the line, nobody draws it faster than them. They're going to let you know. Mm. Ask Herschel Walker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how you know. Ask That's your research. Scott. Oh, you got, I'm just, and it's just recent. Yeah. Ask any of them, man, who think Richard, uh, the, the, the guy, the Republican Steel, Steel guy, he done started oh. seeing the light. Just mm-hmm. go ahead. Go on over there and act like you're going to fit in and watch. Watch. I'm telling you, man. Yeah. You're not, yeah, you can Trump think is, white all you want. You're not fit to be white. Yeah, he's currently facing charges in Georgia for allegedly interfering with the last presidential election. His Supreme Court appointees already helped dismantle affirmative action. Don't forget about that. And women's reproductive rights under Roe Ro v. Wade. His other supporters in office have their sights set on undoing vo- voting rights next. See, yeah. y'all don't even understand. They done took diverse, diversity and inclusion out of schools. Yeah. They get rid of voting right acts. I'm finna tell y'all something. Man. I, who you think behind this here? Right. 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 Mm-hmm. This your boy Trump, he gonna go along with all of this here. Because yeah. he don't care nothing about you. Your advancements. He take all that back. Yeah. See, they don't want to talk about the stuff that happened in the past because they don't want to be reminded of what their forefathers did. But their forefathers did all of this. But if we can get you off of that, that will create more opportunity for us. And we can quit walking around with the shame of slavery and all that we did. I'm not getting off of it. <laughs> you going to keep reminding them of <laughs> You did it. And yep. His hush money trial yeah. started uh, yesterday, right? Yeah, jury selection yeah, on, will go on, on maybe for a week right. or so for the trial. So I guess, he didn't really, uh, I guess he didn't really pay that girl either, huh? Uh huh. No, the hush money trial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. It's not even. This is a former yeah. president we're talking yeah. about. This is just not a regular person, just anyone. This is yeah. someone who used to run the country. <laughs> Paid off a porn star. To quit yeah. talking about Where are we his going business? with this? <laughs> Uh, where we going? Come on, we Michael Cohen. Where you <laughs> yeah. at, Michael? Michael Cohen talking. Go oh, ahead, yeah. Mike. 
You can't shut him up. Uh-uh. Tell it all. <laughs> oh, I forgot one thing. All right. Uh, coming up next, <laughs> the nephew and today's prank phone call right after this. I know y'all better not eat that damn chicken. I know that. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. And the subject is, my wife is an activist at the wrong times. <laughs> we'll get into that and find out what that's all about in just a few. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> at the wrong wait. times. We're not marching now, baby. <laughs> all right, we'll find out what that's all about in just a few, because right now the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Neff? This right here, Shirley, is my auntie's bike. My auntie's bike. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. My auntie's bike. Let's go, cat dog. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach Vaughn. This Vaughn? Hey, man, this, this, this K-Dub, man. Listen, do, 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 do you know somebody that live on Yeah, my mama, my mama stay on Hey, who is this? Hey, this, this K-Dub, man, my auntie, Miss Tinsley, she live on now, my auntie say you uh, came over here and stole a bicycle and some other stuff out of her garage. Okay, hold up. Well, first of all, who is you, man? I, I stole a bike out of somebody's garage. Who is this? Who is K? I don't know no K Dub. This is, this is K Dub, man. My, my auntie, uh, Miss Tinsley, lived down the street from your mama. And my auntie just got to no telling me you the one came over here and took a bike and, and a toolbox or something out of that garage. Man, first of all, I don't even know no damn Miss Tinsley. And second of all, I don't steal. Your, your auntie Miss Tinsley say I stole something out of her garage. Oh, hey, put, put her on the phone, man. Put your auntie on the phone. I ain't stole nothing from nowhere. I ain't got to she steal. Can't, she can't talk. My auntie can't talk to you. Why she can't talk? She say I stole something. No, my, aunt, my auntie Deaf. She sign language me and told me that you the one stole, stole the bike. Your auntie deaf, and she told you, she sign language you and said, I stole the bike. Hold on, wait just a minute. How you get my number? Hold on, wait, wait a minute, man. She number, sign language right? with me now. Hold on. What the Okay, she say, quit all that damn lying. You know damn well you the one that stole the bike. Hey, hey man, hold the up. So your auntie is cussing me out through you in sign language. That's the you telling me that I done stole the damn bike. Say, man, for, for, hey, first of all, how the hell you even get my number, man? I got your, I got I your number from some people that live down the street that say that I asked them for Miss, uh, ain't your mama Miss Yeah, Miss my mama. Okay, okay, well, look, man, the people down the street evidently knew your number. I told them I needed to talk to you as soon as my auntie told me that, that you was the one that stole the bike out the garage. Now, look, I ain't trying to have no problem. I just need you to bring the bike Can you, can you, can you, can you, can you sign language back to your auntie? Yeah, I can sign language back to her. Man, t- tell her that I said that I ain't stole no <laughs> bike. How about that? Tell your auntie I ain't stole no I'm damn bike. Right, right now, man. Hold on. Grown man. I'm trying to tell her right now. Wait a minute. Okay, hold on. She's saying something. She said your black <laughs> is lying. And you know damn well you got that bike. Man, look here, man. <laughs> you, <laughs> your damn <laughs> ain't it. <laughs> that street song <laughs> with nobody on this street except for my mama. <laughs> I'm a grown man. What the f I gotta steal a bike for? Yo, deaf. She, she must be dumb too. She deaf and dumb. She think I stole something. Y'all don't, I, mean, I don't even know y'all. Who the f are you? My auntie ain't deaf and dumb, dude. Okay? My, my auntie don't never lie. And if Miss Tinsley say that, that, that somebody took something, that dog, she telling the truth. My auntie don't be lying. And just to be lying, why she just gonna lie on you? Why she gonna pick you out? Man, you know what? I, I don't know what the f going on. But I ain't got no reason to steal no bike. Now I'm a grown. I got a car that ain't paid for. I got. I'm a grown man. I'm trying to get custody of my son. So I'm gonna come in somebody's garage and steal a bike. Is you crazy? You crazy? She is. Man, get out my line with that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. My ain't to talk. I do what she's saying. Wait a minute, man. I'm trying to see what she's saying. She say that black know damn well he took that bike. And he better bring that damn bike oh, back. Okay. That's that uh, look at man. I don't know why the you still on my line, man. I ain't took no bike. The dumb auntie is lying. Do he, do he see even sign hey, man, hey, hey, dog, let me tell you something. You're going to respect my auntie. You hear me? Hey, man, you going to respect me. You call my phone with that I'm here trying to get my together. You call me some Hey, who are you? Who the are you? I don't know who this is. I don't know no I'm no K Dub, man. I'm K Dub. Everybody know K Dub. I ain't never heard of no K Dub on in my life. My mama been staying on for 15 years. I ain't never heard of no K 
K. Doug. I ain't heard no Miss Tinsley. I ain't heard about no deaf lady. I ain't seen no bike. Get the off my line, man. Hey, man, CC, you gonna make me go down and steal some out of Miss house if you don't bring that damn bike back. Oh, you got me up. Bring somebody to my mama's house if you want to. I'm on my way over there. Bring somebody to my mama house. My family is gonna be over for you. The deaf dumb ain't you got. Whoever down there gave you my number. Everybody, you got me up. We will blow this up. I'll that street up. You go by my mama house. You better not step in my mama grass. You come by my mama plant. I'm gonna you up. You got me up. You gonna turn me to the dark side. I'm on my way right now. I don't know. We still on the phone. Hold on, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What you say? I ain't. My ain't say ain't nobody scared of your. Ow. Crazy. Say tell your deaf ain't to bring her outside. And I will bet you she hear them licks. I'ma be putting on your. Yo, know, I'll beat your. She gonna be undeaf today. I bet she get cured when she see me whooping your. Hey man. Hey, hey look. I ain't coming by myself, homie. Tommy gonna be there with me. Tommy gonna help me whoop your. Ass. Who the is Tommy? Tommy who? Tommy, man, nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> you just got pranked by your mama, Miss Vera. Ah, uh, that's that <laughs> right there, man. Ah, uh, my, uh, my mama know I don't like nobody with him, man. God, uh, your mama you say, your mama say, my son love me to death. He don't let nothing, he take care of me. He don't let nothing go wrong with me. Already. He don't let nobody mess with me. He said, all you got to do is act like you're going to do something to his mama. Oh, man. Well, I hope she heard it then. I hope she hit me because of like I did, man. God, dog. I'm in the mirror sweating. I'm mad for real. <laughs> Y'all did this one, man. I swear to God, I wasn't myself on judgment, man. Tell my mama she wrong for that, too, dude. <laughs> what up, nephew? What up, baby? You, you, you off the chain, boy. You off the chain. You just oh, like me, man, boy. You love your mama. I ain't mad at you. <laughs> hey, I got to ask you, man, one more thing. What is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? Man, without a doubt, man. It's the Steve Harvey <laughs> Morning Show, man. We'll be there for you, Tommy, man. Without a doubt. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, tell Miss Beer I said, yeah, hey, all right. I, I go, I was gonna, we we're gonna go drop off that little two hundred dollars. She wanna, she wanna play games though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Don't bite me on her now, bro. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on! Way too much. What? 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 What is happening? What is happening? <laughs> That's greatness right there. That's just stupidity at its best. That is greatness. And they're gonna get some greatness this weekend. Baltimore, Maryland, Friday and Saturday night, 19th and 20th at the Comedy Factory in Baltimore. Back by popular demand, the nephew is coming your way. All right, got a few tickets left. Y'all come hang out with your boy. Two Friday, two sad. Trying not to, you know, trying not to do nothing Sunday. You know, he didn't got on me, you know, about not getting there on Monday. So, you know, I, I'm going to try to make him hey, feel a little you know better. What, come for on years, in. For, Tommy, for years, I did them both. I, I performed on Sunday night and got them came to work on Monday. Right. Everybody what ain't you. Everybody ain't you. <laughs> you know? That's your response. That's why, that's why we are all different. Everybody do different stuff. Everybody <laughs> ain't you. Is that the response exactly. you give to your boss you on why win. you're not coming to work? My boss is my uncle. What is you talking about, Carla? What? <laughs> but that's your response? Everybody ain't you. Is why you're not coming yes. to work. Yes, yes, that that to him, to my uncle. Yes, oh, everybody just ain't you. He's just shaking his head. Just because it's something he did. He years ago he did it. I, I don't but it's your job, though. It's your Life job. Life has changed. Everything has changed. Could you tell this to another boss that it, wasn't yeah. your uncle? This is where I don't want. I don't have. I'm not gonna ever have another boss that ain't my uncle. <laughs> So you safe on that one. I'm not going to do this. What? So I'm safe. Where they do that at? Where they do that at? When he get through with radio, we, th we through with radio. Uh -huh. That's it. What? <laughs> Your uncle is just shaking his head. All right, Sad. thank you, nephew. Coming up next, Strawberry Letter for today. The subject is, my wife is an activist at the wrong time. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more... 
Please submit your strawberry letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. And you never know, it could be yours. It could be yours. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry Letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, my wife is an activist at the wrong time. Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm a 39-year-old married man. My wife is 37, and she volunteers throughout our community, and it's become her life passion. She got fired right after the pandemic because it was too hard for her to keep her composure with her coworkers after all of the Black Lives Matter movement stuff. Every day she comes home ranting, she came home ranting over something a coworker said, and I'm sure she usually took it the wrong way. Currently, she's the director of a nonprofit organization that does gardens in underserved areas of town. She's often featured on the news, and she's so passionate that it's funny. She's talking about growing greens and tomatoes, but she sounds like Malcolm X. Everyone teases her about it, and we always get that speech about black women are expected to be behind the scenes, not in authoritative (laughs) positions. I tell her all the time that it's not... 1960, and she's got a voice in today's society, but she doesn't have to scowl when she talks. I work for a major food distributor, and our small division uh, gave bags of food out for Easter so that 1,000 families could have a meal. My wife volunteered, and I knew she was going to ruin it somehow. As we were handing out bags to pre-selected families, my wife went to my CEO who was visiting from Florida and asked him if they could only find needy black people to help out. This woman was mad because we didn't have but a few white families. My boss turned bright red and I had to go get my wife. Stephen Shirley, my wife is an activist at the wrong times. How do I talk some sense into her? What can I do? (laughs) <laughs> she sounded like Malcolm X. All right, definitely props to your wife for her dedication, for her passion about her community and all that, for her giving back. That's always a good thing. And here comes the but. But you know you can't take your wife to any more job stuff. You do realize that, okay? Because she, like you said, could ruin it for you. There's a time and a place for everything And the place is not at your husband's work event. You do not confront the CEO there. Keyword, confront. (laughs) Okay? You don't do that. This event is set. People are in place. Things are set to go. Anticipation is high. Everyone is focused on the task at hand and the greater good, period. That's what the day is for. That's what it's all about. It's not for your wife and her passion to help people, which at this moment is clouding her judgment. She needs to understand that what she does affects you. It affects everyone, not just her. You as her husband have to remind her of that. You have to talk to her. That way, hopefully, she'll see that you do support her and her passion, and maybe she'll listen to you and uh, what you're saying, because what she doesn't want to do is to jeopardize everything by finding fault in everything, even when people are trying to do good. Steve? Is Tommy there? No, Tommy stepped away Uh, for a second, Steve. Yeah, I wanted him to do a reenactment in the second half of the letter, but you know. Oh, he'll be back. Oh, he can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but he don't. If he don't understand the letter, you know, we can't. We'll you know, I we sit through you. these damn pranks, but you know, <laughs> he can't sit through these damn letters. He he busy. He got to go somewhere. He doing leg lifts, trying to get tall this summer. Anyway, Sometimes you have to use it. You know, my wife is an activist at the wrong times. You damn right she is. <laughs> Now, your wife, 37, she volunteers throughout the community. Now, the reason she got a volunteer and because it's her life passion is because she got fired. So you once you get fired from a job and, and the word get out why they fired you, you ain't finna work nowhere else. Now she volunteer and now it's her life's passion. But she got fired after the pandemic because it was too hard for her to keep her composure with her coworkers after all the Black Lives Matter movement stuff. Let me translate that for you. Please. It, right after the pandemic, it was too hard for her to shut her damn mouth <laughs> with her coworkers who are white after all the Black Lives Matter movement stuff. 
Every day she came home ranting over something a co-worker said, and I'm sure she usually took it the wrong way. Yes, she did. Hmm. Currently, she's director of a nonprofit organization that does gardens in underserved areas of town. Yeah. She's often featured on the news, and she's so passionate that it's funny. She talking about growing greens and tomatoes, but she sound like Malcolm X. <laughs> How, did, how she, does that go together? How does that work? I'm about these tomatoes. <laughs> I do these greens. <laughs> Y'all up in here, you know, we trying to do the right thing. We do the right thing, come out the dirt. <laughs> That's what dirt is. We landed on the dirt, but dirt is You know, here we are. We always got to push through something. Now you got us out here farming. Oh, I guess you want us to get back to picking, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but we're like, not we're mean? picking with a purpose now <laughs> we ain't picking for free we picking to volunteer <laughs> feeding the disadvantaged communities and out uh, underserved communities of this city that's what these gardens is for mm-hmm. since the government refuses to help us we have now <laughs> been re- relegated to helping ourselves that's who we is up in here <laughs> I'm about that life. <laughs> By enemies on, necessary. Right? Everybody ain't got a green right. thumb. These Hang are on. about the black thumbs in the neighborhood. We'll have part two of Steve's response coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. Yeah. Today's strawberry letter. <laughs> Subject, my wife is an activist. By any means necessary. At the wrong time. We're going to grow yes. these crops. <laughs> Back after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Let's recap, Steve. Today's strawberry letter. The subject is my wife is an activist at the wrong times. Yeah, this woman is uh used to work uh at a job, but then she got fired because after the pandemic, all the Black Lives Matter stuff, she couldn't keep her mouth closed down at her job. So now she cussing everybody out every day, talking about what the coworkers said when the coworkers was trying to work through it too. Her husband said she probably was taking it the wrong way. So now she's the director of a nonprofit organization that feeds the hungry. But now she be on TV all the time with uh, with this garden and stuff she doing, but the man say she sound like Malcolm X. So, you know, we had did a little thing earlier letting you know that she about these tomatoes. She do these greens up in here. You know what I'm saying? Like, we come from the dirt. I guess now y'all really want us to get back to picking again, but we not. We serve in the underprivileged community, and that's it. And it's only because the government itself does not fulfill its obligation and duty to those in need. So now we got Malcolm X in charge of the nonprofit organization. Well, he took her to work to help with their company giveaway. She she met her husband's boss and ran up to her boss talking about she mad at the boss because they only, she mad because they could only find needy black people to help out. This woman was mad because we only had a few white families. <laughs> my boss turned bright red. I had to get, to, I had to go get my wife. My wife is an activist at the wrong times. How do I talk some sense to her? What can I do? There's nothing you could do. Because she is committed to this life. Yeah. Now, the problem is, she need to make up who is she, though. If you're going to be Malcolm X, you can't be white and you can't be fighting to feed white families. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, lady. You got to make up your mind. <laughs> You can't be about Black Lives Matter and then be pushing the white agenda. (laughs) Now, listen to me. Let me just say this to you. You can't be Malcolm X and Donald Trump at the same time. No, 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 you can't. No, sir. You gonna have to, you gonna have to pull yourself together. Mm. Now, (laughs) this is what's gonna happen. I see Tommy's here now, so Tommy... Here yes, is this woman who is committed to the culture and Black Lives Matter. She got fired from a job, but now she's the director of a nonprofit that gives out food from this garden they make. And now white people down there, she mad about that. Her husband wants to talk some sense into her because he is afraid that she's going to mess this up too. You are now the husband trying to talk some sense into your militant wife who I have deemed as the Malcolm X of garden and 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 uh, 
<laughs> the Malcolm X of garden and uh, volunteer programs, and you the husband that's trying to save the lives. So why are you constantly talking to me, Herman? Uh, maybe uh, you 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 getting a little you, you you're taking a little too far. If I could just get you to calm down a little bit, that's all I'm trying to get you to do. Calm just, down. Why are we calm now? <laughs> what, I guess the slaves should have been calm too. <laughs> if I can just get you to walk a little lighter, that's all I'm just trying to do. Just just a little lighter. That that that. Oh, don't you walk see? lighter, as in light skin. Oh, so now you want me to walk white? <laughs> I'm not asking you to walk white. I'm not asking you that. I'm not asking. I'm just asking you to just be a little bit more open. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Shouldn't we try to save other people as as well? Don't you think so? Do you even understand what Black Lives Matter was about? I I totally understand what Black Lives Matter means. I understand it. But but all lives matter, baby. Right? All lives do matter, but when are black lives going to matter like all the rest of the lies? <laughs> I'm not saying all the... But Herman. <laughs> okay, okay. Listen, all I'm saying is, is if we take a different approach with this, we'll be able to help a lot more people. Let's just, let's just take help a different approach. Help a lot approach. more. We're trying to help our people. Oh, I see what's going on here what? now. Ooh, what? what? Oh, I... Shaquita Mohammed Abdul <laughs> is married <laughs> to an Uncle Tom. Oh, Your name whoa, is Thomas, whoa, isn't whoa. it? Whoa. <laughs> whoa, Uncle Tom? That's, 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 that's a, come on, baby. We, we married. Herman uh, they, Tom Jackson. <laughs> Herman <laughs> Tom. Okay. Okay. Keep now you got to, you about to mess up our relationship now due to this. You do realize. Oh, it. our relationship is already messed up when you refuse to join me with the Black Lives Matter movement, my brother. <laughs> I'm your husband. <laughs> I'm your husband, baby. <laughs> why 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 are you talking to me like this? I mean, we 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 got oh, married. We we, we oh, took so a now oath. I have been relegated to just you are my husband. I guess you are thinking I am your wife. Yes, you are my wife. What are you? Are, are you saying oh, you're not? So now you picking pronouns. <laughs> I'm not picking anything. I'm, you are my wife. Are you not my wife? What? What's? What? What are we? What's, what are we talking about here? Am I not? I guess not. Then. Because the everything. revolution will not be televised. <laughs> okay. What? You just got here. What? <laughs> no, with that. What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Post, what's going on? Ignorant show. Post uh, your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM on Instagram and Facebook. And check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on the free iHeartRadio app. Free never sounded so good. You can download it today. Now, coming up at 46 minutes after the hour, we got Junior and Sports Talk right after this. And the Black Panthers. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for Junior and Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? All right, Charlotte in the WNBA draft took center stage last night. Um, as expected, Caitlin Clark goes first to the Indiana Fever. Um, yeah. right. I didn't right. even know that they had a team. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> but she gonna stay in the Midwest. She went to the Indiana Fever. And, you know, our girl Angel Reese went seventh. She went to the Chicago Sky. So that's big. Mad. Yeah, yeah. We got yeah. mad about that. Go ahead, Angel. It's not where you, yeah. it's not where you drafted. That is how you play, girl. Don't even worry about that. Yeah. Uh, Cameron Brink went second. She out of Stanford. She went to the LA Sparks. But Camilla Cardoza out of South Carolina, she would also went to the Chicago Sky. So that means Angel and Camilla going to be teammates in nice. Chicago. That's yes. going to be nice, man. Uh, but it was a really star set. Like, those girls looked absolutely amazing in the dresses they had on. They looked absolutely amazing. Yeah, they look good. Like, no, they good. did. They look like they ready to turn pro. But, you know, Unc, we was talking about this. That that means Indiana is going to have a lot of viewership this season with, with Caitlin Clark coming there, to the no, Indiana. That's what I was dead to you. <laughs> I knew that's what Terrible. you were going. <laughs> because, you know, whoever drafts Caitlin <laughs> is going to get the megastar of women's basketball so far in terms of viewership of all time. <laughs> 
Mm. And that's a big part of it. Now, let's see if it translates into the pro game, though. See, that's mm. where oh. they got to really figure out what to do in the WNBA with attendance. Because if you can get attendance up, you can get TV rights up. You get TV rights up. You get them girls' salaries up, those women's salaries up, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, it. They, the base salary for a WNBA player the first year is under 100000 Wow. And that's sad. That's that's really is. It's under hundred thousand. Wrong. I don't like that's that. Dead wrong. No, I don't like that at all either. And that's why we well, fight for. Okay, what's you know, the problem? You got to put the fans in the seats. You can't own a team and you don't have the fans in the seats. If you watch a WNBA game, they won't even show the crowd half the time. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so sparse. Mm -hmm. Marketing. But you know, you got to do a better job of attending. And I, I just got to tell you, man. Now, women got to support women's sports. Yes. I women. think everybody has to support women's sports. See, it can't just make money with just all women in the stands. Women go to men that. games. But mm -hmm. Steve keeps no, saying you got to be women. You know? I don't. Keep saying that. You have a you point. I don't. And what, what is that? You have, to, you have to support women's sports. Women mm -hmm. have to support women's sports. But women See, in general you, you can't, are, aren't into sports. Oh, excuse me for interrupt. Aren't into sports like men are, though so they're not. Okay. That's a fact. Oh, D ta da! <laughs> okay, they're going to prop. Ta da! <laughs> Go ahead, <Shirley. laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Coming up at the top of the hour, a woman needs advice on social media, Steve. She says her aunt keeps giving her unsolicited advice. Uh, we'll talk about that right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, this is from Andrea on uh, Steve Harvey FM. She says, my aunt keeps giving me unsolicited advice about raising my children from their diet to their screen time, even though her own kids are, frankly, a mess. I've been polite so far, but it's getting on my nerves. Should I tell her off and once and for all? Or should I just keep biting my tongue for family peace? Is there a way to set boundaries without causing a family feud? No, I That's don't really see how you can do that at this point. I think you have to go and just blast it, just sandblast it. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're just going to let her have to have it. Hey, Auntie, listen here. I know you're trying to be helpful, but I don't really want you talking to me about my kids because I don't think you've done all that damn good a job with yours. Ooh. Mm. Ooh, ooh. Oh, wow. ooh. Raymond dropped out of school. He getting a GED. <laughs> Going down the list. Terrell is down in juvie right now. <laughs> <sighs> Your daughter is doing fine. She's at least looking like she's doing well in school. Mm -hmm. But we just caught her smoking weed last week at Grandma's house. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Now, and we ain't even going to talk about uh, Pookie and his little ignorant ass. What's Pookie doing? Because you down at the school every Friday about something he done did. And he been, and he been suspended four times. Please stop talking to me about my children, okay? Mm. <laughs> nah. Nah. And I can tell you right now, clearly your children are a problem when they got to put out, when they got put out of Sunday school. We you know that. She <laughs> told me the ass out. <laughs> Yeah. So now, we're going right. to put a stop to this right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because she, she said her like own that? kids are a mess. Her cousins are a mess. <laughs> and just point out the mess. Yeah. Wow. All right. I think we have time for another one, Steve. This is from Vince on Steve Harvey FM. Vince says, my wife and I have hit a rough patch as of late. To work through it, I've suggested couples counseling, but my wife is having no part of it. Even so, I've decided that I would go to a therapist alone to try and work through my part of it. Here's the problem. Lately, whenever I come home from an appointment, she wants to talk about what happened in my session and what am I saying about her. Uh, so far, my only response has been that I'm that my therapy sessions are my time and it's none of her business. But I add that if she wants to come along and to be a part of it, she's more than welcome to join me. That's where the conversation ends. But to say things have gotten even more tense is an understatement. Is there a better response to this or am I right to say my therapy is my business? Well, I admire you, brother, for wanting to work through it. Cause yeah. see, I, it, it just, if it's more and more tense, 
and you want to do something about it, you offer couples therapy. You thought that was a good idea. She didn't. So you went on there to handle your part of it. Mm-hmm. There is no other way to do it, man. I mean, but you can't, you, you're you not going to win this battle by yourself. It take two to tangle. Mm. You know, it take two people to work on the marriage, not one. One. I don't know how, I don't know how one fix it. Yeah. If you want to win in the marriage and she don't, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. If you think it's a problem in the marriage and she don't, I don't know what to tell you. But you're a good mm. dude, though. I'll tell you that. You're one of them good men. And all she wants to know is what are, what is he saying about her to the therapist? What is he saying? Well, about I went her? to the, I went to uh, couples therapy one time. Uh huh. Yeah. One. And I go. And uh, what happened? Yeah, I, I I left therapy and went. Hood in law office. <laughs> Wait a minute. The same day. <laughs> Why did I know this is going to be a crazy answer? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your life, Steve Harvey. At least you done went out there more than once. I went one time. <laughs> one and time? Immediately Steve. after that, I made a phone call as soon as I got back to the house. You knew. <laughs> you just knew. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what I don't know what the therapist was gonna say in the next session, but but she wasn't gonna be talking to me though. <laughs> <laughs> she were done. <laughs> Clearly, I recognized the problem, even if she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at twenty minutes after, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so here's a question: Is Generation Z over social media? Really? Well, it could be because it's hard, huh? It could be because as hard as it is to believe the generation raised on social media, Generation Z, may be growing tired of it by now. Uh, Last year, the University of Chicago published a report that found that 57% of college students who are active users of Instagram would, quote, prefer to live in a world without the platform. Researchers asked the students how much they would have to be paid to get rid of their social media. And the average answer, about $50. Mm. So mm -hmm, $50 would would make uh, them make their social media go away. So do you guys agree that life would be better without social media? I do. (laughs) I promise you I do. Might be. I like no, ain't it. Ain't no Mike. Oh, no, no, no. no. Oh, I like no, it. No, no, no. Oh, wait. Well, they... Right now. Because we didn't have it growing up, and we were we fine. We, we were just fine. fine. Yeah, we yeah. turned out fine. Well, yeah. I, I mean, like it for what? I, I don't need it. I don't need it to be successful. Mm-hmm. And I sure don't need it to find out the lies that's out there. I don't, I don't me and my wife the other day was still, are we still together? I said, yeah, baby, I think so. The paparazzi was taking pictures of me, so I just wanted to everything okay back over there. Yeah, everything fine, but I ain't heard nothing. All right, coming up in 33 minutes after the hour, we'll play a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for a round of Would You Rather. Would you rather be in extreme heat wearing a ski suit you know, one of those ski snow suits, or would you rather be in extreme cold in a bikini or a swimsuit? Which one? No, I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna be in that heat. I'll be in the heat for sure. I'm gonna be in the heat. I know damn well. Your ass can't heat. be in no cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we as soon as you say answer, cold, you might well be on in the hospital right now. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Steve? Oh, I'm gonna take the hot suit. Yeah, I'd rather be too hot than too cold. All right, would you We're rather lose some get... weight too? Uh huh. We're gonna lose some weight with that. Yeah, so we'll be good. yeah, you will. <laughs> All right, we were just talking about social media earlier in the show. So so would you rather give up social media or eat the same dinner for the rest of your life? Oh, the hell with social media. <laughs> the same food all day. Same dude. dinner for the rest of your nah. life or give up social media. Which one? I don't want to eat the same thing. I don't want so to So you're going to have to, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm just going to keep my keep social it. media. Junior? Yeah, I'm just going to keep the social media. I'm uh-huh. going to eat chicken for the rest of my life. No, I'm not yeah. going to. <laughs> Steve, I'm on social media all the time and still got a damn shit. So whatever. <laughs> you better stunt. Well, I'm <laughs> Why are you hating? I'm gonna eat. 
Oh. <laughs> All right. Would you rather own just one pair of shoes or just one blazer? Oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> no, Come on, fashionista. Uh, uh-huh. I want to hear this answer, blue cheese. Come on, answer. Uh. That's a tough one. One blazer. Uh-huh. Or one pair. <laughs> one blazer. I'm going with the one blazer. Yeah, one we got blazer. To, we got to have a variety yeah. of everything else, though. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Steve, sit up. Steve, what? come on up. No, I'm going to ta- take this one pair of shoes. I got to change clothes. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, them okay. shoes are going to look think- a whole lot, boy. Oh, wait. So you think that you're going to be able to switch your shoes, but you got to wear this same damn place? <laughs> <laughs> oh, here come blue suit. Navy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, would you rather? Him, no. Here's one. Would you rather forget your wife's birthday, or would you rather forget your anniversary every year? Which one, Ooh. birthday or anniversary? Oh, you can't do neither one of them. Can't, man. can't do neither one. Would you rather? Pick I'd rather have a, a front tooth chipped. <laughs> <laughs> that's not one of the options. Well, that's the option that. I'm going to take. I'll take birthday or anniversary. Birthday. And knock my front tooth out before I forget this crazy-ass person's birthday and anniversary. Every year, you got to be crazy. <laughs> uh, but I, you think birthday or anniversary, which is more important? Are they both equally they as both important? They're same. They're same. Oh, okay. Mm, we can't See, do neither one. We can't do that, man. Uh-uh. Well, All right. Look who talked. <laughs> the newly I think birthdays are more important. Uh, Anna, that's my too. personal opinion. Mm. All right. That's today's round of Would You Rather. Coming up, it's our last break of the day, and we'll close out the show with the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Here we are, guys. Our last break of the day on this Tuesday. It's been a good day. <laughs> yep. And, oh, yeah. uh,. Well, you know, we talked about a lot of stuff. Hmm? Might lead to something. Say it again, um, Steve. Any anybody got any questions? Might lead to something. Well, I did <laughs> want to ask you. Um, we talked about Megan the Stallion earlier, and, and you kind of made a joke about it. You know, she talked about her workout routine and all of that, and what she does. And you kind of made a joke about it about um, you know, don't try to to other people out there. Don't try to do what. Megan does and think you're going to look like Megan. But but I mean, I think what you really wanted to say under undertone of that was be the best you you can be. Well, a a deeper lying meaning when I joke around like that is even like, you know, I think people. I think because of social media, I think Mm -hmm. because of everybody always making comparisons and and this person flexing and that person flexing and then like it the old saying was keeping up with the joneses yeah i think people forget that you have a chosen path for yourself too Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think people give up on their chosen path you know it's sort of really funny man Uh, i was thinking the other day about a relative of mine And when we were younger, man, he was incredibly talented. I mean, man, this dude, man, could draw anything. I mean, anything, man. When we were kids, I mean, he, his pictures of people, he actually drew people. While we was drawing stick figures, he was drawing people. You know, when we were making that little side view of a car, he was drawing full-fledged cars at angles with tires with the wheels turning and the details on the cars were incredible. I was just looking. He took a pen one day and drew a picture of Huckleberry Finn. He had went rabbit hunting and he was holding the rabbit by his ears. He took a pen and put these dots and drew this picture, but in dots. I watched this guy, man, and I marveled at his gift and his talent. And sad to say, he never used it. He never pursued it. He never used it. And then I watched another relative of mine who was related only by marriage. It is my daughter-in-law's brother. This guy was doing some art for me one time because he could draw. He was so talented of an artist. 
He does tattoos, too. And he did his own tattoo on his arm. He did his own tattoo. And then he did a a piece of art for me that I liked one time. And then, then he was getting married and he fell on hard times and he came to me for some help and I helped him out a little bit. And then one time we were talking and he said, hey man, do you have a job for me? And I said, no, I don't. He said, hey man, you, you didn't even think about that. I said, I'm, I'm not gonna give you a job. I said, because man, you have a gift. I've never seen anybody other than one or other relative I had who can draw like you. I said, man, why don't you pursue that? That's a great gift you have. Well, that was about seven years ago we had this conversation. He just presented Rocky, I mean, he ASAP Rocky and Rihanna, a piece of art that he had did for them. He has done Kobe Bryant pictures. He has done pictures for so many people now. He's came back and done more artwork for me. And all of a sudden I realized he used his gift. He followed his path. The biggest injustice you can do for yourself is not to follow your path. I don't know how my other really relative really feels. He's retired from his job now and everything, you know. And uh, he never used that God-given gift. And I often wondered, man, what would he have been? What could he have done had he followed his path? I, I just, I never understood why he didn't pursue it. He just didn't have it in him to take the chance. I guess he just didn't have it in him to foster the belief in himself. I, I don't know what it is because for me to not follow my path It's just unthinkable. I just don't know what I would do if I didn't follow my path, if I didn't chase my dreams, if I didn't use this gift. I I don't know what that is. I am suggesting and employing everybody out there, use your God-given gift because he gave you a gift. If your gift is not tied to your job, if your job is not tied to your gift, you better start pursuing it sooner or later because these people are going to take your job from you. Age going to come take you away. You're going to retire. Something going to happen. They're going to close a plant. If you have a gift, now if your gift is teaching and you're a teacher, you're doing it. If, 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 you are, if, 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 if you're a first responder and that's your gift, helping people, police officers, firemen, You know, EP, medical emergency people, that's your gift. I got it. Tie your gift to your job. But if your job is not tied to your gift, man, stop sitting there and watching your path get away from me. Man, follow your path, man. it'll, It'll be such a rewarding life for you. And it's never too late to do it, man. But don't sit there with this gift God gave you and do nothing with it. Because I, I just don't know what that ends up for you. Those are my closing remarks today. I just want that to encourage somebody, man, to follow your path, chase your dream, use your gift. Those are my closing remarks. Hey, y'all, talk to God today. He would absolutely love to hear from you. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 